If you use Framer, you probably already know that the native carousel is way too simple. Everyone ends up using the same default component and it just looks kind of boring. But today I'm going to show you how to build a fully custom carousel that's going to level up your projects. What is up guys, it's G here. So I decided to record this video because it was a huge pain for me at the beginning to create custom carousels. And I think this is going to help you a lot. So if it does, make sure to subscribe to the channel. As I mentioned, we do have um, the native components, slideshow and the carousel. Both have their pros and cons. So let's use the carousel for the, the slideshow, sorry, for this example. As you probably know, we have to link the component to the cards that live outside of our page. And in this case, uh, let's increase the number of items to 3.5. So it works. Um, we have the navigation functionality out of the box. But if you ever try to use this on your projects, unless it's a very simple structure, you will soon run into a couple of issues. For example, if I want to trigger a pop-up when clicking on one of these cards, I can't do that because they live outside of the page. And if I try to add a fixed overlay, Framer won't allow me to edit that. Another thing, let me just uh, disable the dots and let's um, group the arrows and position them on the bottom right, which is here. So, okay, it uh, looks a little better, but uh, in this case, I don't want this to be cropped off. I want it going all the way to the edge of the page. And for the slideshow, I can set this to fit content. And if I try to manually increase this, you'll see that the arrows move with it. So yeah, not great. What I'm trying to say is you will pretty soon run into a couple of issues. So first thing, let's wrap these cards in a new stack. Let's call this cards and change width and height to fit content. Now we can grab this stack and place it inside our container. Now we also need to manually add the navigation arrows. For that, I already created a component. So let's drag that into our page and this is just a simple component where we have four variants, right active with a hover state, right inactive, and same thing for left. So obviously we need two of these. Um, one of them is going to be left. Let's just leave it on active for now. And I'm also going to group them in a new stack, change the direction and change the distribution to the end. Let's just increase the gap a little bit. Perfect. Now, last thing would be to grab the cards and the nav stack and put them in a new stack. Let's just change the alignment to the left and maybe increase the gap a little bit. Uh, let's say 24. Now I can grab this stack that holds the cards and the navigation arrows, right click and create component. Let's call this carousel. Change the theme. Now, first thing, let me just enable the overflow so you can see what's going on. So this can be named step one. And from here, I can create a new variant. I usually like placing them um, below each other. All we're gonna do is use absolute positioning to move the stack, the card stack, to the left, um, which is this one. But before we do that, let's make sure that we have selected the variant and change the height to fixed. And also um, change the distribution to the end. This is gonna be important. So my arrows stay at the bottom here. Now, with that set, I can select the card stack, change the position, to absolute and now pretty simple i'm gonna see how wide my card is um 290 and we can't forget about the gap that we have between these elements in this case it's 10 pixels so that totals 300 pixels right all i have to do let's unlink the right pin 
let's set negative 300 on the left. Makes sense? And we're going to basically do the same thing for our last step. So let me place this. Um, this is step two and step three. Another cool trick here is um, you don't have to manually calculate depending on uh, how many variants you have. It can get kind of messy. So all you have to do is just go to the next variant. We have negative 300. Let's set negative 300. Framer is going to calculate this for you. With that in place, all we have to do is set up the interactions between all of these variants. So I'm going to select the right arrow, press L on my keyboard and select step two. Let's leave it on click. And this interaction was automatically applied to all of these. So let's select this one, change to step three. And for the last arrow, we don't want any interactions. So let's just delete that. And we can't forget the way back. So I'm going to select this, press L here. Select this one, press L, select step one. Perfect. One last thing that I usually like doing is, well, first I'm going to change the variant of this left arrow, which doesn't have any interactions. Let's change this to inactive and same thing for this one, right? Inactive. Now don't forget that everything that we do in the primary variant is going to be carried over to the other ones. So let's select these two and bring them back to active. Last thing here is selecting again, the inactive arrows, this one and this one. Go to styles, pointer events. Let's set it to none. Don't forget to select these two and remove that setting. Okay. Now that we have the interactions in place, let's see how it looks. There we go. Fully functioning carousel. And as you can see, since we added the pointer events set to none, um, it won't allow me to click on the navigation arrow that doesn't have an interaction in it. And it will also change the cursor. So it'll give some feedback to the user. But there it is. Now you have full control of the appearance of your carousel and even the transition between the variants. If you want to increase the, the time, looks good. Um, you can go one step further. Let me drag this. So this is again, a simple component with three frames and three variants, basically like a progress indicator. Let's just grab them and place these two in a new stack. And there we go. For the first one, let's set it to the primary variant change this and select the last one, change it to number three. Let's see. Now pay attention to this little progress indicator. Once I switch variants, how cool is that? And very, very simple to implement. Uh, you can get really creative with whatever you want to set here as interactions. Okay. And usually you are going to have to create a specific version for the smaller screens because right now since we only have three variants for the desktop version i'm going to click this two times and there's still more to see so that's why usually we're going to do the same process for the phone you can even change the variants if you had more than one variant for the cards uh, another great advantage of creating this custom carousel is that you can set this to maybe a smaller version for the smaller screens. But what I'm trying to say is that you would basically do the same process all over again. And this would be called like the mobile step one. And then, of course, you'd have to link the, the navigation arrows to these variants down here, right? But the process would be exactly the same. And now you can have a fully custom carousel on your project. That is it for this video. If you enjoy this content, make sure to subscribe to the channel for more and I'll see you in the next one.